Hi everybody, this is a follow-up video to the one I just created a few minutes ago on how to do statistics with formulas within Excel. One thing I neglected to mention to you in the last um, video, and I really should have done this, but is if you hit on a typical Windows PC laptop, um, if you hit Control tilde, which is up next to the one, it will show you the formula instead of the result of the formula, which is pretty nice. Um, you'll notice, by the way, that caps don't matter. Um, but that's pretty nice if you want to like grade spreadsheets and you want to know if kids did this with formulas or not, you can do control tilde and just quickly check. Okay. Um, another thing you can do is go view and you can say show, show formulas. You'll notice the shortcut is listed right there as well if you forget it later on. Um, but today in this video, we're going to talk about histograms and how you create one. Um, in our curriculum, it asks for you to use Microsoft Excel with a data analysis tool pack. I will do that in a different video. This is going to specifically focus on Google Sheets. It will not give you all of the advanced statistics that they ask for um, necessarily in the homework assignment. But um, to be honest, this is a, a course for introduction to engineering. So they're not going to use those. They don't know what they mean. You don't know what those statistics mean. You know, let's focus on the important things like figuring out, is this data normally distributed? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the data that I'm interested in charting. After I highlight the data, I'm going to go insert a chart. It's going to pop up with the box here. And notice that it says, based on the thing that I've selected, it automatically tries to choose a chart type for me. And in this case, it even knows you want a histogram, don't you? This is awesome because now I can see without, I mean, this takes so little clicking around, it gives me a histogram. OK, I can go through and do all sorts of stuff here, like editing it. I can take away the legend. I can use all sorts of stuff. So I'm using row one as a header. Um, if I want to change an histogram of example, ACT score, if I wanted to change that, all I'd have to do is come over here, delete ACT score and hit enter. Uh, it doesn't do that. OK, I was hoping that it would. I guess I have to come in here and. Uh, do delete on my own, but notice how easy it is, right? ACT scores, or I could see distribution showing up or something, you know, something that, that gives it a good title. Um, this piece right here, the, you know, if I'm graphing multiple things at the same time, it would make sense to have a legend. But since I, I'm only graphing ACT score, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to hit delete. Oh, that doesn't get rid of it, does it? Can I right click on it? Yeah. Let's go through over here. Let's go through and, and, and customize, okay? Chart styles, a histogram, that's great. Um, charts and axes, titles, ACT. Looks like we have everything here. The legend, we actually don't need. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to none. And that gets rid of the legend over here. The series we're looking at is the different scores, okay? And what you'll notice, these are called buckets. So you'll see that it only jumps over um, like there's a gap between 11.36 and 12.95. They're saying everything, everything that was above 11.36 and all the way up to 12.94, we're going to lump into this category. So that's called a bucket. We're going to throw it all in the same bucket. In this case, um, you know, it doesn't make sense. Since we're talking ACT scores, you're, nobody's scoring a 16.14. Everybody gets a whole number, right? So let's go through and let's talk about um, how we can get to... Uh, the, the legends here have changed. Here we go. Bucket size. All right. So I click on the histogram tab. I'm going to change the bucket size to go by like uh, twos. Okay. And this way that I can see they're lumping everything. So here are your nines and tens. Here are your elevens and twelves. Here are your thirteens and fourteens. Your fifteens and sixteens. So on. Okay, so this actually, when it says range 15 to 17 here, when I hover over it, really what it means is 15 all the way up to 16.99 because 17 would go up to the next category. I can see here, just from the picture, man, that looks a lot like a bell curve. Now, I know it's not exactly perfect, but it kind of goes up and it peaks and then it comes back down and there seem to be more people lumped in the middle than there are on the outside. We do have a bell curve. Look how easy that is, okay? Um, if you want the counts, anything else like that, you can go through and do it. But what we now know is that this data is normally distributed, okay? So what I can do is I can go through and do some advanced statistics, like figure out where the quartiles are. I can figure out where, um, if I want to do box and whisker plots, I could also figure out like where one standard deviation away from the mean is um, by, by saying, well, I got 21.4 in this histogram is my mean value. 
and I'm going to go up or down by 4.44 to figure out what one standard deviation is, two standard deviations, so on and so forth. So now that I know it's a bell curve, all of those measures of central tendency, all of the spread, the, vari the measures of variation, um, they're usable. We can get data from them. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you want more advanced statistics, I would say go to Microsoft Excel, use the data analysis tool pack, but man, for, for ease of use with a bunch of kids that are basically, for the most part, freshmen in high school, this is a pretty slick way of easily getting to the point. Hopefully this makes sense. If you need Microsoft Excel help, I'm about to make a video on that in a second. I will post it in another video that's somewhere nearby on my YouTube channel.